a problem. I don't wanna solve it, baby. It's a problem. I don't wanna solve it. Having trouble figuring out why you're getting tons and tons of traffic to your website and no one is buying from your store well keep watching this video I'm gonna share a few tips on why this is happening now just a disclaimer out there there's no real way for us to know what the actual problem is with your traffic and your sales and stuff like that without looking at your analytics and your business and all the little details because everything is different from company to company but these are some of the top mistakes that brands make who aren't converting their traffic into sales. One of the first reasons why your traffic isn't turning into sales is because of your website. Your website can have plenty of distractions or it's just not well laid out so customers don't know where to go. They have a hard time navigating and understanding what to do next. And a lot of brands, you know, they, they worry about the aesthetics, which is super important. You know, you want your brand to look professional and well put together. But the organization of your website really does impact how a customer is going to go through that funnel or your customer journey. So it's really important in the planning phase of your website for you to think from your audience perspective and how they will operate on your website. If your customers feel like they can't trust you or you're not a trustworthy brand, then they're not going to give you their credit card information. If they go to your website and it's just low quality branding, um, low quality images, it looks like maybe a child took the photo or the lighting is bad or the product looks bad, then of course they're not going to buy anything with you. You wanna stick with high quality professional images and if you're going to use stock photos, then you really need to be selective in the ones that you choose. So the ones that you find that are probably the most accessible, like on Pixel or Unsplash or, you know, things that people are searching a lot or that may be used a lot, you want to stay away from those because, you know, if you can find them easily, then your customer can and other companies can. And that doesn't differentiate you from any other business and it just comes off as a scam. Another thing with trust is really your branding. So customers, when they come to your website, they have an expectation of what, um, what professional businesses look like. And so if you compare your businesses to others in your niche or in your industry, and it's not up to par, they're likely gonna go with your competition simply because you know you don't look like an established business, you don't look professional, and this is why it's so important to invest in this in the beginning. So, you know, there's nothing really wrong with DIY branding. Obviously, um, if you're really skilled, you can do this yourself, but I always recommend for you to work with a local designer or a brand designer or even us actually um, to you know conceptualize your branding as a whole and make sure that you are presenting yourself very professional like and presentable to your customers so this is another thing that beginning businesses don't really have and this is reviews or social proof and from the beginning whenever we're starting with a business whether they're just launching or they already launched it's important to curate reviews when you guys are just starting out it can be hard to get those reviews because you don't have any sales yet but as a business you want to seek those out whether that's by giving a free product out working with influencers or even giving them to family members and friends to use and review and share their results and things like that you absolutely have to start somewhere and you don't want to wait until you actually get that first sale to generate those reviews for your product Thing about trust is your company information so this is about your policies your about me page and your contact information so some people may be turned off from you simply because your policies aren't professional or you don't have policies on your website at all if they don't know when they're gonna get an item or what the return policy is then they're just gonna opt for another brand Likewise, if they're just meeting you and they don't know much about you, some people will go to your about page or 
your Instagram page to learn about you, to learn what you stand for, to learn why you're here and if you are a legitimate business. This is about making your page look more legitimate, meaning you are a real business, you are not a scam. And you have to be able to induce that trust in every part of your website. You can have tons and tons of traffic on your website, but it, it could be the wrong traffic. So if you're not being thoughtful like in your ads or you're not targeting the right audience, then they're likely not going to buy something from your store. Let's just say that you have a hair company and you went to um, um, pop-up event and there were tons and tons of fashion brands there yeah there may be a correlation there but likely people who are going to this pop-up event are going to be interested in buying clothes so yeah you may say oh they might want hair too but if it's not a hair event like Bronner Brothers or you know um, something well related then you're you're probably gonna be rolling the dice on those customers who are gonna go to your website and you know see if they really want something so the next thing is your product pages and this kind of ties in with your website but honestly this is more overlooked and more important than the overall website itself sometimes because the product page is where you sell the item so a lot of people don't really think about this they just kind of put their listing out there they don't really care about the description they don't care about um, the information that's really going to get that customer to add it to the cart and actually check out so you know focusing on you know creating a really nice description um yeah the product information is important like the ingredients or you know the features but you really want to focus on why your customer should buy this from you what is so great about this product that will give them the result or solve the problem that they have? Um, let's just say you're selling lashes, for instance. You don't want to necessarily focus on, oh, these are 10 millimeter lashes, this is human hair, et cetera, et cetera. You actually want to focus on the result. This will make your eye look bigger or this will make you feel more fabulous etc etc so you really want to focus on the result and those things that your customer actually wants and to do this you really have to understand your customer and so you know doing that target audience research and really having a good understanding of what they want and all their desires is important to creating the perfect product page you're on the product page back to the idea of trust um, you want to be showcasing those reviews you want to be showing people in the product that isn't just you um, you want to be speaking about the product maybe doing videos or product demos and showing the customer how well the product works and what it will look like in real life and finally but almost most importantly I preach about this all the time but it is your photos I highly recommend that you don't use your vendors photos for your product page period point blank and I'm gonna talk about this more in another video but um, usually those are very generic you can find them on the internet anywhere and they don't really show the customer how to use it or how it would be beneficial when it's just on a white background or it's on a table or it's on some carpet or you know no matter how fancy it looks it usually doesn't translate well if there isn't other um, examples or photos or thing or videos that you know back it up like I said before there's no real way to know this without looking at your actual website so if you need help with this we have a service called the website analysis so go ahead and check the link and check that out if you want a professional opinion on your website and what you can do better to convert more sales I left our high converting website checklist below for you. It's a template um, basically going through several things you will need to have a high converting website and you can get that in the description below. I hope that this was helpful for you guys and if you have any questions or need any more information, feel free to leave a comment below. And that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.